Assassin's Creed. Now that I have your attention, I am here with Martina. Hello. Martina is a guide. And the reason I said Assassin's Creed is that we are now going to walk to the building that was used in that computer game. Exactly. In uh, Assassin's Creed 2. From what, PlayStation. What's the name of the building? The building is uh, Palazzo Vecchio, old palace. And now we are going to see in the next square. This really path. is the most amazing building I've ever seen. And um, this video though isn't about the building, nor is it about Assassin's Creed. Most of the emails that I get from you guys, oh my friends, police, <laughs> most of the, the, the messages and emails and so on that I get from you guys, uh, probably roughly 20% are about self-employment. So uh, I thought that this episode will be about Martina's work as a guide. Because yes. you are self-employed? Yes, I'm a freelancer. I'm a self-employed. I'm a licensed guide in Florence. I'm working full-time as a guide, yes. And you need a license to be a guide? Of course you need a license to be a guide. It's not easy to have the license as well. You have to study a lot. You have to join classes. And it's a almost one year um, specific um, uh, course to, to be a guide. You and spent you a whole year to be a guide? Yeah. Yes. Did you have an exam? You have a big exam. It's a national exam, usually a regional exam. It depends on. And um, then you can be a guide. Speak up a little bit. Yeah, we wanna, of course. We want to hear um, you. <laughs> So here, here we are at, uh, at the uh, Palazzo Vecchio. It's Palazzo Vecchio. This palace is amazing. It's the symbol of politics in Florence. And uh, it has always been, like uh, since uh, 1299, this is the symbol of politics in Florence. So it's 700 years old. Yeah, and changed lots of names. So before we bombard you guys with, uh, with historical uh, facts and whatnot, I told you that this was going to be an episode about self-employment. Yeah. So let's get let's get back to you, your life as a guide. Um, we had a we just met by the way, and this is also she's not paying me here to advertise for her website, and also I am not uh, paying her for uh, the guide service. Just for the record, uh, so this is just two friends having a chat, having a chat, having a chat, even though we just met. So I wanted to ask you about how you acquire customers when you are a guide here. Yeah, there are different ways. Uh, I can join um, different agencies. For example, agencies, they have their own clients and they can uh, hire me as a um, freelancer so I can collaborate with them. And do you and then, then these work. agencies, do you tell them your specialty? Like you can do the palace tours, for example, exactly. you can do the David tours? Yeah, usually if you work in Florence, all the guys here um, are really able to do the highlights of the city and they know uh, the general knowledge of the city of Florence, but they're supposed to know also the entire province of the city. So, for example, Florence and the cities around Florence. Uh, moreover, you can also have your own clients as a, as a private guide. So, for example, you can. Um, I also have my private uh, page, and I can uh, promote my private tour in some sense. In this way, you can hire your. But own that was new. You said you just started. Yeah, I started so, two years ago to be a guide. Before I was a tour leader. There is a different thing. Tour leading. It's when you bring clients to guide. For example, or around the cities. You can bring them from Florence to Siena, and then in Siena they have a guide explaining things. So in this case, you are a tour leader. Tour guiding is providing information about cities, about buildings inside museums. It's different. So, so it most of, so most of your, um, uh, your business now, is it from your website or is it from these uh, companies? Um, yeah, usually from companies it's easier to have clients because I just started and my business, uh, my own page is pretty unknown. <laughs> so I'm working with a uh, uh, few companies uh, that are giving my... To me so that's where the business comes from? Yeah. So, so it's hard to kind of get the clients in the beginning, yeah. right? Yeah, at the beginning, yes. Have you noticed now that you're picking up some traction? Are you yeah. getting... Yeah, it's improving. Year by year it's improving a lot. Because maybe um, I had some private clients that then they gave uh, my name to their own friends that are coming here. Here, some relatives, some friends, so this happened. So it's like so uh, word of mouth as well. Exactly, exactly. Or you can um, obviously uh, promote your own tour if you have other person interested in, um, in doing a, a specific tour inside your feet. See? What is the most famous tour here? Is it is it uh, mm. the Palazzo Vecchio? Probably in the Uffizi Gallery. I still Uffizi Gallery. Yeah, that one is the Uffizi Gallery. That is one of the most beautiful museum in the world. Are you qualified to do all the tours? Of course. Just briefly here, I want to tell you guys. Now, I have been in this palace before and I am going to do a tour now 
with Martina after I'm done filming this vlog because it's the most amazing building I've ever seen and when I was there I was really thinking wow I don't understand this painting I don't understand the history of this room and and uh, this is why I recommend when you are visiting historical sites unless you have studied extensively the period or the buildings or the, or the, the art you're, you're looking at a guide is just gonna make your experience so much better yeah we can open the eyes about what you are exactly looking at so and you, you can understand things if you don't have someone explaining to you what is this for example you told me there is something right here so this is a copy yeah. of the statue of David of and you said there's something here that everyone just walks right by without knowing yeah and you will never notice it we have to maybe you could show us that now let's go there are hidden secrets things hidden in the city for so this example, is a some messages a hidden secret some, yeah secrets at the entrance of the palace at, right at the entrance of the palace for example there's this amazing masterpiece there is a graffiti made by the greatest artist of the world my hero who's that michelangelo of course michelangelo he yeah. did graffiti yeah have a look. can you notice it it's very hidden it's a face it's a face it's a profile and uh, if you walk if you walk by yourself you will never notice that one also when you know that it's there so it's not how, how do you know it is michelangelo we know that it's michelangelo but we don't know why um, he made it there are several hypotheses that i will tell you uh, first of all we know that he made it with the hand backward and probably it's um, about one man that was annoying him doing chatting to him it was a big chatter very famous chatter so annoying michelangelo and Michelangelo, while he was there listening to him bored, he started doing uh, caving the profile of that man. Another so that's the man that annoyed him? Yeah. That's the theory? The theory. Or well, another theory is that probably there was someone that was executed in the, in the square and Michelangelo was assisting to this execution. Executed? Yeah. Killed? Killed. Savonarola? Savonarola as well, we have to, uh, to check the symbol where Savonarola has been born there. Oh really? That's yeah, here? Yeah, that's the symbol. I'm going to show oh, you, wow. of course. The most uh, uh, possible things about this graffiti that I forgot to tell you, it's uh, that maybe uh, it was someone that was not paying Michelangelo on time and Michelangelo wanted to... To shame to him? Sh yeah. To so he, uh, yeah. To say, look, he, he's he not paying. He chiseled his, uh, his profile yeah, <laughs> at the palace. Him. He's not giving money back. <laughs> Wow, so uh, again, there you see the About beauty of having a guide. I would never have seen that if, uh, if it wasn't for you. In fact, I have walked by here a couple of times without seeing this one. So uh, if you want to know the person I just mentioned, Savonarola, he actually became a leader here, wasn't he? He, he yeah. ruled Florence for a while. During Republican time and uh, he was uh, uh, a really strict Dominican priest. Um, he was a pious preacher who yeah who basically started preaching about hellfire and all kinds of crazy things, trying to bring the city back to God, right? Exactly. And after the time of Lorenzo the Magnificent, especially after the death of Lorenzo the Magnificent, condemning especially his lifestyle, the lifestyle of the city. He also organized um, a fire burnt where they were uh, burning vanities. So really, women, they were burning here, jewels, there were um, all the paintings showing naked, they were burned. And here, the year after... Oh, is this where made... Savonarola was burnt? Exactly. What does this say? Qui dove con i suoi confratelli fra Domenico Bombicini e Fran Silvestro Maruffi. This means here, where with the um, other two priests, Domenico Bombicini and Silvestro Maruffi, uh, the 23rd of May, 1498, um, we um, hung here and burned Girolamo Savonarola. After four centuries, uh, so, they so the city memory. took him out. They were sick of his uh, religious preaching, yeah. and then they burned him. Actually, uh, the priest was uh, in um, in a prison, and the prison is exactly there in the tower. So if we can, back, we can see also the place where he remained. Oh wow! Before. Yeah. Can we fit my bicep through here? Yes, we can. You're in jail. <laughs> that, you're that's in better. Jail. <laughs> I'm Savonarola. They're about to burn me at the stake. Guys, come break me out. We can go up there after. Of course. And uh, here is the place where they firstly um, hang him and then he, they burn him. 
And to be honest, they also destroy all the dust coming from the body of Savonarola to not make reliquies. So to make sure that he could not be celebrated anymore. I, I, don't make Florentine inhabitants get angry. <laughs> not not uh, something to lie. So Here also we have other different uh, hidden secrets. Another will, secret, um, tell me. I will challenge you, let's see. Here, Another challenge. I told you that one is Cosimo the first, the Grand Duke of yes. Medici family. In this beautiful fountain you have the god Neptune, the god of the sea. But if you can check the faces, maybe you can notice some similarities. Between the faces? Between the faces. Well, I'm pretty bad with faces, but I'll give it a go. Let's come into the shade here. You mean between Cosimo and and Neptune? Uh, and yeah. Neptune? yeah. But probably well, Cosimo they have a beard. They have a beautiful beard, yeah. both of them. But also the face is really similar because Cosimo wanted to be represented as a Neptune. It's a kind of hidden message that he wants to convey to the city. He has now the power in the harbor of Pisa after conquering so, Pisa. So why would a? Uh, I assume Cosimo was Christian. Right? Yeah. Why would he care for Greek mythological gods? Of course, Greek, myth Greek mythology is something that uh, became really fashionable during Renaissance. Uh, so, from that moment, from the beginning of 1400, we started retaking naked models in Renaissance. Is, is that why you have all these Greek of looking course, statues over course. here as well? Mo Renaissance is okay. rebirth. You are reborning from the past, taking new ideas, modernizing new, uh, the old theme of the Greek mythology of uh, the Roman time, of the Roman Empire, and you are modernizing them, using them also for conveying new messages. So all that came back in vogue during yeah. the Renaissance, became very popular again. Exactly. So, it wouldn't, so it wasn't heresy? Did the church say, how could you make a statue of Neptune? Isn't that blasphemy? No, it Isn't was not. It was not. No, no, no. It was not. It's not a. Um, um, it's not a blasphemy thing. It was also something that was common to do during Renaissance. Naked. Um, about was that a new thing? Could okay. could could you have done that, for example, prior to the Renaissance, or would the, would the church then have objected? Like what? Um, what's your opinion on that? My opinion is that when you, when you do something, um, a church is controlling in iconoclastic uh, images. So blasphemy would have been uh, representing uh, naked saints in some sense if it is not controlled by the, the church idea. Um, about uh, paganism, this is considered pagan, paganism. So my oh, music, yeah. oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, le let's go here outside and I'm going to show you another hidden thing. Because here, another hidden piece and then we will walk into the palace. Here there's a beautiful statue that is made by Benvenuto Cellini and this is and very it's famous representing Perseus as you can see in Florence we are pretty obsessed by beheading people for example Perseus cutting the head of Medusa David cutting the head of Goliath uh, Judith cutting the head of Oliverne well, what's it's the meaning of that? it's a political strong symbol that you can find in the city of Florence and uh, in this particular statue you have a secret that stands behind the statue because this amazing piece um, if you follow me, I will show you as a secret hidden behind the head of Perseus. You Let's know the legend of uh, Med Medusa? I'm not familiar with the legend, but I do know of Medusa. Medusa was scary, uh, a scary monster that was transforming people in stone, just uh, looking at in the eyes. In Greek mythology? In Greek mythology. And um, they had to call the hero Perseus. To, to cut the head of Medusa and with some gift that he received by Minerva and by Mercury he could defeat this monster cutting the head but the beautiful things about this masterpiece that we know the artist Benvenuto Cellini almost died <laughs> to do it because he wanted to challenge himself so much it was not easy to work in a, a, this piece of bronze cause why, so why did he almost die from making the statue? because he wanted to do it in a home, home place and doing it um, using uh, as less number of pieces as possible to melt them together and uh, it's uh, required a high temperature to do it so to have this high temperature um, constant uh, at the end he had to burn we know that he had to burn also forks spoons knives of his house to try to maintain the temperatures high in his house Te the amazing. temperature of what sorry of the, the, the of temperature they eat they eat the temperature to to melt the material ah, i yeah. see and the material is the material is bronze bronze and, uh, here behind in yeah. the face if you can see yeah. Uh, maybe if you come a little bit far away. This camera is kind of has a wide-angle lens, but we'll try. Exactly. 
can you see this behind the back of the it's head like a of, helmet like a face yeah it's the auto portrait of the self portrait of the artist benvenuto cellini very wow. grumpy that was very famous to having a bad behavior if you can see there are the two eyes the nose and the beard there i see it i see it so more than this beautiful amazing masterpieces in a very amazing way he also had the time to portrait himself <laughs> behind the head of Perseus. So these artists, they, they like to uh, be a bit eccentric, to leave exactly. hidden messages. So yeah. all the, it's not a rumor, it's not a myth. No, exactly, that, uh, to show that he was able to do that. Well, uh, we are at the 16 minute mark now. Should we go in to the palace? The entrance to the palace is where we are going to end this video. So this is the entrance. Yeah. This is the entrance of the beautiful town hall of Florence. This palace is still nowadays our town hall. Now it's so, the town hall. Yeah, still nowadays, since 1299, it's the active symbol of politics. So it's still nowadays the place where you have to come if you have to do bureaucratic things or documents for inhabitants of the city of Florence. So it's still active. What I find incredible is that this is the free part. I mean, this yeah. is, we have not even entered really the museum yet. I mean, if this room was in my country, it would be the most magnificent thing and we would charge ridiculous amount of money to come in here and see it and we, it would be on our stamps, it would be our pride. But in Florence it's kind of like, well, we have better things, so this, this yeah. room can be for free. It's to give you the, yeah, the, to, to make you go inside also. And uh, here about this uh, beautiful flower you have to at least finish the video with this beautiful symbol, it's the most important symbol in Florence. The lily flower. The lily flower the is the symbol of Florence. The lily flower is the symbol of the city of Florence. This, uh, this little camera is probably not capturing the beauty of this room at all. That is part of the, the problem with working with a wide-angle lens. But uh, one question yeah. I have for you. Why is it that you have here on these um, uh, paintings mm -hmm. cities that are not in Italy? Yeah, this is a good question. This is nice. Um, actually, they painted these for uh, the wedding of Francesco I. That was the first son of the lots of children he had, Cosimo I. For his wedding, they decided to repaint the patio, the courtyard, to welcome the new wife of uh, Francesco, that actually was the daughter of the Emperor of Austria. Of ah, the time. that's why you have so Salzburg and exactly. I Those see, the, the Austro-Hungarian yeah. Empire. It's the uh, empire. So Vienna, Prague, Bratislava, that at the time was called Bosonia. I yeah. see, and there you have Vienna. Yeah. Check out these old maps of the Medici family. So this globe is... 500 years old. Now it's seriously faded, it's been somewhat uh, destroyed uh, during the times they tried to renovate it over the centuries, but uh, all of these maps here in the frames are not destroyed. Here is uh, Persia. I think most people can recognize this peninsula. So, uh, incredible maps i'm not gonna i'm gonna do a little walk through here i'm not gonna say much but i just want to show you guys the beauty that is on offer here and why you really have to go and do a tour of this palace when you are in florence so i'm going to turn the camera around as i walk back out and you can kind of get a feel for um for what it is like in here this famous statue used to um there used to be wine pouring out from this one. This is of a, uh, a woman named Judith, I think. She uh, seduced an Assyrian king, beheaded him. So you're drinking the king's blood. And this used to be, uh, used to be in, in, in public, it used to be sprouting blood out of that in, uh, in the square. Here you can see the, the Brunelleschi's dome. Do you ever get tired? Do you ever get tired of seeing the place no, so many times, because, every day? Um, you could see, I was looking again, I was amazed. Every day is more beautiful. Everything is so more it's growing beautiful. on you? Yeah.
I'm gonna go down guys and uh, give you a little look from below. This is the most incredible room and you used to have Leonardo working over there and Michelangelo over here at the same time but these frescoes that they were working on is not what you see here they were destroyed for some reason the red balls again the logos of Medici call them kings, but grand duke. That other time, more or less, is the same concept of room. Here is a very interesting factoid I want to show you guys. I complained about this graffiti, and I said, who on earth would ruin this artwork? Um, and then, I was told by Martina that, hold on, it's from 1604. So it's actually, people had no respect for art even back then. <laughs> this room is crazy, crazy beautiful. There are many, 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 many rooms here, guys, I haven't showed you. Uh, but I just want to give you a sneak preview of what you can expect. When you, when you are here. This is of course the, the most beautiful room of them all. I'm gonna go up there because the, that's where the light is coming from. But uh, yeah, the idea isn't to kind of show you every detail that is here, but uh, this is uh, a statue by Michelangelo, the original. Michelangelo was working on frescoes here, side by side. Leonardo was over there. The two guys didn't like each other, but they were working in the same room. There was a school here. And uh, yeah, this whole room is just, as I said, m might have said previously in this video, I thought not they could topple the palace in Venezia. But you know, this palace actually does. And the reason I love this room in particular so much is that all these paintings here, I'll take some photos and, and, and throw them in as I'm talking, like this one right here. All these photos, this is frescoes actually, paintings are in the ceiling, are all about the glory of, uh, of Florence. So there's no religious um, themes here. It's all about war. Florence laying siege to Siena, Florence um, capturing Luca, and so on. Now, I think I should go for uh, uh, dinner. So this might be the end of the video. Who knows? You didn't think I was going to end it there, did you guys? We're back. So. <laughs> We're doing the tour of the, uh, the amazing Assassin's Creed Palace, Palazzo Vecchio, and we're talking about um, oh, Russian tour group, just in the middle of my monologue. Uh, let's, go, let's go here then, and uh, see if... Uh, the problem with this camera is that the, uh, the sound is monodirectional, so I have, that's why I'm kind of holding the camera on whoever talks, but anyway... Um, you were telling me that you actually wanted to be a teacher. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to be a teacher. My graduation studies, they were about language, international languages and studies, and literatures especially. And uh, yeah, I mainly wanted to be a teacher. And then then I decided uh, to, to become a guide. Yeah. As, as a side thing? Yeah, it's a side thing, but now it became my main thing, so I don't want to become yeah. a teacher probably anymore. And now you I say you don't so even much. care. So. I I, I would like, but I don't care so much, like before, because I think that being a guide is more or less the same thing. Actually, you are... And you have new students every day. Yeah, you have new so. students. It's amazing. You meet lots of new people. It's really the best job in the world. Probably. The reason I wanted to just, just stop and record that is because so many people, they have a plan, and maybe you do five years at university, you know, struggling to be something, and then, then you, you come up with an idea, just a little side thing, and then that turns into your main 
your main thing. So I mean, the point being, I made a, an episode the other day when I said less thinking, more doing. So basically, you just said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be a yeah. guide. Did you, did you imagine it would turn into a full-time thing? Yes, um, of course, okay. because uh, uh, when I was uh, like 18, 19 uh, already... They're leaving, thought, we can yeah, take our spot. This place. <laughs> Just look at the view here, guys. <laughs> the Tuscan... What do you call this? The Tuscan Hills? Rose. Ah, Tuscan Hills, yes, yeah. of course. And have a look at Saminata's church that is amazing over the hill there. And Santa Croce's church. This camera is horrible for landscapes, but I can assure you it's beautiful, guys. I'm gonna put some picture. Yeah, I'll, I'll take some photos and I'll, I'll, I'll throw that in there. So, uh, yeah, back, back to, so now yeah, it's your main job. Yeah, I was thinking that always I was this um, indecision between art and language. So about language, not English, of course, but my main languages were Spanish and French. Then, uh, um, as soon as I finished doing my University of Languages, studying abroad, I spent some time in Spain, I lived in Spain for a long time. Then when I came here, I was, um, yeah, like missing something. So I decided to add this specialization in art. And um, as soon as I started studying art, then I joined the proper schools to be a guide. Because, uh, yeah, actually before to be a guide here, you'll really have to have a proper license. You, you need the license. If you don't have a proper so license, this is not... Uh, you go to jail. You're not qualified. Yes, you can't work. So you have to find guides with proper license. And um, So is there, a, is, there a, is there a downside? Do you, you regret kind of no. going in that direction? No, I really am really happy. I'm really happy. I'm more happy. I'm happier now to be a guide than probably to be a teacher. Who knows? Maybe with the time, I'm surely um, will try the national position to become a teacher. As soon as they, uh, we will have the possibility of doing it, we are gonna try, of course. But um, I, I think I will do mainly uh, guiding. Mainly guiding. Yeah. You said it's well, one of the problems is that it's very cyclical. So you have some months that are very good. Yeah. And then you have some months that are. Yeah. Um, actually, in Florence, it's never so bad because you always have tourists, you always have work, and it's amazing to show them the, this beautiful, wonderful. So, so what is a great so day? Like with a, uh, we how many nice tours can you do in one day? Yeah, <laughs> it depends on you, on how sports. What's your you best are. day? My best day is it's like five tours per day, but it's crazy because at the end you're very tired. And one tour and is one hour. Yeah, no, it depends. You can have also half day tours that is three hours, or you can have a full day of six hours. Tour, that is, uh, and you yeah. get paid per person that's on the tour, or is it kind of like set uh, price no, for usually, a group? Usually, yeah, exactly. Usually, you got paid by per service, so um, per tour, obviously. So it it depends. Uh, not not it's not um, compulsory like that, but mainly you get paid by per services, and then this amount of money has to be split by the participants of the tour. Probably. So that was Quite. a lucrative day when you did six tours in a day. Yeah, it's so stressy because I'm working mainly in English, in Spanish, in Italian as well. So you switch languages so many times. So at the end, you can't even talk. One wow! Properly. So you can run full tours in all those languages. Yeah, you, you, yes, it's very funny because, you, for example, during the days I mainly work in the dome and uh, I'm climbing up the dome so much time per day. Sometimes twice per day, or yeah, there are days. On the Brunelleschi's. Yeah, four hundred sixty. You, you saw how day. sweaty and tired I was going up there. So imagine <laughs> so you, you're doing it. Too. But this is maybe April, May, June, July, August, September as well, October. Then maybe season starts to be a little bit lower. People so, are less. So what if you want to come to Florence and you kind of you want to have the city more or less to yourself? Like you don't, yeah. you don't, you, you want a, a a quiet month when there's not so many tourists. What is yeah. the best month? Uh, of course, January, February, and uh, it's uh, it's one of the most beautiful moments in the city because you it's cold, it's actually cold, but uh, you can enjoy the city by do, your do own. Do you get snow here sometimes? Uh, well, snow all around the city, yes, of course. In the hill, we had lots of snow. That would be amazing to see snow-covered roofs. But in the city, floor, there's too much humidity, and sometimes uh, it's not easy uh, to, to have snow. In my village, because I've born in Monte Amiata, Abadia San Salvatore, precisely, there is um, a beautiful village in, the, in this mountain. We have lots of snow. We grew up with snow, so like meters and meters of snow. Well, I just want to throw in that little, that little. Um, 
like I said I started this video I was going to talk about being a tour guide and then we get lost in, in seeing the in seeing the city and so on but uh, we're now in the middle of the tour here I might throw in some some images I might use the camera as we walk out of here later on but the tour has been great um, all the things I've seen in Florence from Brunelleschi's dome to Michelangelo statue this palace is 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 by far the greatest thing so if you come to Florence and only have time for one thing I would say come to this palace so now we're signing off yet again if it's for the last time I don't know we'll see <laughs> who knows who knows <laughs> we've scaled 400 steps coming up on the top of the building here top of the tower on with the sunglasses I don't know if this is higher than the dome or not we'll see So this is his closed up up here. There's a, a selfie queue. Looks like it's raining over there. Here we go. Okay, there we have the dome. So this is not quite as high up as the dome, but uh, I'm gonna say when you come here, uh, sure, the view is nice up here as well, but not as great as the dome. For me, the museum is the main reason why you should come here. All right, we are leaving the Palazzo Vecchio here. Hopefully now, I know this video again has been a bit all over the place, but hopefully now you uh, know a little bit more about what it's like to be an Italian tour guide. And uh, we will see, maybe there will be a, a, uh, a uh, maybe we can do a guided tour of a market or something in the future. So yeah, maybe you will meet uh, Martina again, who knows? But th thank you so much for, for sharing thank you. for thank sharing you so uh, your, your life with us and everything and yeah. and uh, I hope to see you soon when you will come back we are here yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 awesome yeah. awesome thank, thank you so much thank you bye 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 bye, bye, bye. all right guys that was it that was uh, a day in the life of a tour guide but you didn't think I was just gonna end it like that did you oh. Martina uh, is it okay if I give you a, a tip for the tour? Ah, I don't mind. A gift? It's just uh, so much that you are trying to publish and... I just want, don't want to trouble you with this all so many things. It's not a trouble, but I like to help some self-employed entrepreneur Thank out so much, every month. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Don't, uh, don't, no, it's too much. It's, not, it's not too much. You're, are you crazy? You're no, an independent. No, really. Are you crazy? You're an independent entrepreneur. Every month I help out somebody like you. Yeah, but this is so much. This, this month it's your turn. <laughs> it's too much. Really. Please, please take it. Really, I don't know. It's really. for you. I use it. Use it to build your I website. Use it to build your brand. Thank you so much. So much. Thank really. you so much for Thank for you. for showing us around. Thank you so much. So thank you. Now we're signing off. <laughs> bye, <laughs> bye. bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> It's keep it. No, it's, it's for real. It's for no, real. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> okay, that was. Uh, I had to turn the camera off there because there was a serious chance of uh, Martina actually not accepting the uh, the tip. But um, I turned off the camera and she was really, really like, "Wow, this was this was uh, too much and so on." But I explained to her that every month I help out. I'm looking for entrepreneurs, self-employed people like her. And uh, it was really a great tour that she gave me, and uh, I really appreciate that she um, that she um, she didn't expect anything. That tour was free, and uh, being on camera and film and everything, so well deserving. This was my is this my July or is this my June? My June entrepreneur video. I can't remember. I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to uh, see when I posted the last one, which was in Sri Lanka. But anyway, I'm now on my way to make a food video. I'm actually now right outside uh, the place that I'm gonna eat a Fiorentina steak in. And uh, I'm late, so I'm gonna have to rush to the restaurant. See you in the next video.